Okay guys, so check it out. I've got my Microsoft Access database here and I can click my send WhatsApp message button and I get a WhatsApp message in my WhatsApp Messenger which I linked online and if I click on my button again I get the same message again uh, and if I copy that phone number and paste it in here and make a different message on record number two then click my send WhatsApp button again I should get another message and there it is and if I link a file in my code as well and send my message, I can send that too. And as you can see, there's a PDF that I link to my messaging. And I can click and download that into my downloads there. And of course, go ahead and open that file if I want to. I can open it. You can see I sent a PDF that says we sent a PDF attachment via WhatsApp. I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Microsoft Access playlist and we're going to take a look at sending WhatsApp messages uh, using our Microsoft Access database. Now, this is a very, very handy feature for those of you that want to do all kinds of messaging and things like that. And uh, we're going to not only send a WhatsApp message, we're going to send WhatsApp messages with attachments. In this case, we're going to send a PDF. So let's get to it. Interested in further topics like these? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Okay, guys, if you didn't set up a Twilio account yet, go ahead and do it and find those selections in the menu. That's what we're going to do today. We're sending a WhatsApp message and we'll start setting up our table now in Microsoft Access. A little different from last time when we did SMS messaging where I just did it on a form that was unbound. I thought today I would put some messages into a table and what we're going to do is we're going to set up this table. We'll put an ID column in there with an auto number as the uh, type. And that's going to create an, a key for us. And then we'll put a WhatsApp 2 as a short text. And then we'll do a uh, WhatsApp uh, message as a short text as well. This is a very simple table. And it's just going to have the 2 phone number and the message. And so that'll get us started. So I'm going to save that as TBL message and go OK. And uh, it's going to say, oh, I need to assign my primary key, which is right. So that's an ID, which is an auto number. And so if we say yes to that, it'll automatically assign that primary key to our table, which you should always have a primary key in your table. And then we'll go ahead and I'm going to punch in a phone number here, uh, which I have attached to the Twilio service. So we can send back and forth as a test in their sandbox and then that's going to be the two uh, phone number and then we'll go ahead and type in a message here as well now we we do need to put that plus one on there it's a bit of a gotcha we're going to explore that a little bit later in this episode about uh, how the plus one or the country code works and so we'll get back to that but let's put our message in hey this is a whatsapp message let's just send something very simple and that ought to do it to get us started so we've got one number in there and we've got a message in there and now we've got a table um, it's going to ask me to save the layout here because i changed the width of a column and that's okay and so we are good to go from there i'll go ahead and click on the create ribbon and i'm going to create a form from the uh, form wizard this time very very simple uh, we'll just put in our TBL message there and I'm going to hit the uh, the forward button there to just put all the all of the columns in and uh, that's going to give us F FRM MSG which will be form message and uh, uh, I'll just say go ahead and open and there we have it that is our form We've got our WhatsApp 2 uh, phone number in there and the WhatsApp message. And uh, that is what we want to see. So we've got one record in our table right now. And so there's only one record showing in the form. And uh, that's where we are going to get started. So it looks OK, but let's go ahead and right click on that tab and we can go to the design view um, and we can take a look at that header there. We'll, We'll change that and just put in a header that sort of makes sense. We'll call it WhatsApp uh, messaging. And, uh, and then we can 
start looking at the design of our form here. So we've got WhatsApp messages in there. And uh, now what we can do is uh, you can see that the fields are all there from the table. Uh, let's extend the detail section a little bit there. And I'm going to open the form design ribbon there. And I'll go to my controls. And then I'll choose a button because we're going to have a button that sends our WhatsApp message. And so I'll click onto the form and that's going to put that button. If you get the wizard there, you can just click cancel. And then you can see now we've got our, uh, our button here on the form. And so I'll go to the other tab. I'm going to give the button a name that actually makes sense to our code and everything. So we'll call it CMD WhatsApp. Um, and then we'll click on the format tab and we'll put in a caption and that's really what you see on the button there. So there we go. We'll say send WhatsApp. That's probably fine for a description for now. Uh, the user will understand what's happening there. And then we can click on our event tab for that button. We'll click into the on click event there and then see the ellipsis there. You'll click on that and then click on the code builder or double click on the code builder and that'll bring up the code for the event that happens when the button is clicked. I'll go ahead and put a comment at the top here. We'll send a WhatsApp message using this procedure, using this button, and we can uh, start. Now I'm going to have some uh, variables, kind of like the variables that you saw with the SMS session that we did uh, in my last uh, episode, but there are some big differences between the procedures, uh, the different uh, variables that we use, and uh, also we're going to be sending an attachment this time as well. Uh, but some of them are the same, so we're going to start off with our URL, our data, our user, and our password strings. And we're also going to go to our tools menu, and we're going to go get a reference. Now last time we use the XML3, uh, which is okay. It's pretty old. This time we'll use the XML6, which is a bit newer. And uh, that's going to allow us to make a web request. And uh, we'll use the uh, version 6 this time. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll dim our object, our request object, as server XML HTTP uh, 60. And that's going to give us, uh, allow us to have a variable that's going to allow us to make that HTTP request, uh, which is going to post some data and connect with Twilio and all of those kind of neat things. And so from there, what we can do is we can get our URL. Now you're going to see the URL in the section that I pointed out at the very beginning of the video there. Uh, where I pointed out in the Twilio sort of website, uh, you're going to see this string. Now mine looks like this. Um, it's got my account number, um, and you can see the account number there. And you'll have the, your account number in yours, and uh, and you'll want to make sure that that is the one that you're using because you'll have a corresponding password as well and uh, you'll be using that today to send some messages. Similar to last time, we'll go ahead and we'll create our data string here. We're going to put from equals uh, plus one uh, and then the phone number uh, of your, you know, your sending, your WhatsApp sending phone number basically. And so in this case, uh, the Twilio interface gave me this temporary phone number that expires after 48 hours. Um, and it helps us to practice using the, the interface. But you can get a permanent number and uh, you can use it in order to send messages. And so just like we did last time, we're going to go ahead and continue and build our data string. So I'm, I'm using concatenation here. You can see I'm putting some values together. So the first one was that from, uh, the from information. And in the second one, uh, second line here, we're going to also append on the ampersand and then the two equals WhatsApp and then colon and then the value of the phone number, which will be on the form that we're currently looking at. 
And since we're building a subroutine, which is using an event on our form directly, uh, we can refer to the WhatsApp2 uh, text box there and field value, which is called WhatsApp2. And so we can go me, exclamation, WhatsApp2, and that is an expression which will go and get the value from that text box on the form. And then we can continue on and build our data string and put the last bit in here, which will be uh, the body. And so the body equals the value of the uh, WhatsApp message text box, which is on our form. And so we'll use another me exclamation WhatsApp message there. Uh, me exclamation just says get the value from me and since this code is running on this form that's what it refers to that WhatsApp message uh, text box that you see there and now that I'm looking at it I can see that I'm missing my WhatsApp here so you actually need to have this WhatsApp uh, colon in your from and to but you do not need it in the body uh, part of your data string. Next, we'll go ahead and load our user, um, our user variable, that is str user. So we're gonna copy that account number that you see in your account string, or you can just get it, you can see it on your uh, Twilio page, they'll have your account number there that you can paste in. So I'm gonna paste in that number, and then I will uh, also load my password and now I actually put my password in another module uh, so that I didn't have to write it here. Uh, so I've loaded it into a global variable, which is called my password, but you could actually just type your password inside of the double quotes and it will do it uh, for you. So then you'll have a username and password set up and you're good to go. Once you've got that, you've basically got everything that you need in order to send a message. Um, you've got all of your sort of variables set up so we can go ahead and set our request object which will be that uh, obj request there we'll set it to new server xml hdp6 and then we can open our request we'll open that request we're going to use post and we're going to uh, put in our url which is the url that we're going to connect to um, we're going to say the variable or variant async will be false and uh, we'll go ahead and put in our username and password as the final arguments there. So that's going to start that session, the uh, XML HTTP session there and we're going to go ahead and, and use that request. We'll set the request header uh, similar to what we did for SMS. We're going to use this request header uh, using content type and we're going to put in application and we're going to use the uh, x www uh, form URL encoded uh, which is going to change the sort of text especially in the body uh, it's going to change that into sort of web friendly encoding so that um, it can be interpreted on the other end once we have set our uh, request header there uh, we can go ahead and we'll uh, do the uh, request object dot send and then uh, we can send the data. So once we've got that uh, request open, we're going to send the, uh, the data, uh, which has the, you know, what's up from number and the to number and the body and uh, and that's going to uh, make our message go. Now we do want to actually get the sort of return uh, response from the server that we're connecting to uh, to see if it worked or it didn't work and why and so we'll do that as a debug.print uh, request object dot response text there and that should be enough for us. So overall this looks pretty good we can have a look through our code and make sure we don't have any mistakes in there uh, looks alright um, I don't think there's any issues there uh, we can go ahead and give it a try and uh, so in order to do that we can minimize our or close our code window and open our form and there's our phone number hey this is a whatsapp message and uh, let's send that so i clicked on the button and let's see what we get i did not receive it in there so it says 
the the phone number is not a valid phone number and now I've traced it down it appears to be to do with the plus one in the phone number and so let's delete that from the immediate window so that's where the return message can help you um, so I removed the uh, country code from there this might be something to do with the test environment uh, but I removed the uh, country code and let's take a look and see what we get here so I'm going to click that send what's up message and uh, and we can pull up our code window here and see uh, and this is what a successful message will look like in in the return message so it'll have your message in it it says from this mess or from this uh, number and it looks like the country code has been automatically put on there and uh, that is going to help us a lot so I'll do a little bit of digging and I'll find out why that happened um, and I'll put it into the comments once I've got uh, some information about that but for now we've got a success message and that is sending a WhatsApp message and I can go ahead and clear my messages so I've cleared it I'll hit send WhatsApp again and there we go it is put the message into the recipient um, inbox there and so I click that one if I you know if I go back and I click it again uh, you can see it sends it again um, and if we scroll forward I'll copy this phone number here and I will paste that into this record as well and uh, and then I can uh, type a different message in I'll say this is a different message and I can say send what's up and this should come there we go so there's the uh, this is a different message and so uh, looking really great there and that is exactly what we want to see for sending individual messages using WhatsApp so really great for you know if you're if you're you know got appointments or anything anything like that this is really great um, up to you know a few hundred messages I think if you want to send more than that you need to have a short code what's called a short code uh, phone number now if we wanted to add a PDF or something like that we can do that as well and so we'll go ahead and we're gonna append into our data string so I'm gonna add one more um, argument into our data string and I took a PDF and I put it onto my website um, so that it's easily grabbable by services like these and you might have like a Dropbox or something that you could use as well um, but what we can do is we can put in the URL for a PDF there and then go back to our form and we can see what happens so we'll click on that send what's up and there is our PDF it came through you can also use uh, some other document formats like JPEGs and all kinds of stuff make sure you check out which ones you can send okay I clicked the download there and if I if I click here oh, it downloads if you click it there too uh, so there we go so now I've got two PDF I've got two of the downloads of the same one but anyway you can open it directly in on your phone or on your device or on your computer there we go we've got our PDF and it says we sent a PDF attachment via WhatsApp you could also try adding an attachment field to your table and form that would be one way to do it but overall that is how you can send WhatsApp messages from your Microsoft Access database